we're all so busy with our lives. How often do you stop and like look at something? How often do you smell and smell something? You know what I mean? It's just like we go through life with, with this day-to-day -day, like routine and you don't really stop and experience and breathe and, and just appreciate what's there. And I think that's one thing that wine has enabled me to do is you stop and you take it and you look at it and you smell it and you live life through senses for that quick 25 minutes. It's like nothing else matters other than this liquid. We must talk some more You can sleep on my bed I'm fine on the floor All the answers you have Will be questioned tonight Both wrong yet both right There's no black or white I'm not done being yours. You're perfectly flawed, and I've watched you grow. Your vintage is rare. I hope that you know. Sunshine some days, but night always falls. You dream life in countryside live in white walls your potential remains but your doubt still sustains unlatch the gate and unearth your fate please drink with me now we must talk some more you can sleep on my bed i'm fine on the floor all the answers you have will be questioned tonight. Both wrong yet both right. There's no black or white. Uh, I think it's an interesting, interesting passion that we've all developed, you know. I mean, you have this plant, you know, for thousands and thousands of years. I mean, people have been dedicating their life to make something amazing out of it, you know. We're at the culmination of the best, the best knowledge about the best winemaking. Salmiers are professionals that are supposedly experts about knowing about beverage and wine. So it's an amazing art to be able to understand the whole world, and it's an amazing thing to show it to people. I thought that the chef had it figured out. Psalms now have become the new rock stars in our industry, and you have a, a whole, you know, a, a completely different level of person now wanting to be a psalm. Wines of today must have stories, and those stories we tell the guests by flavor and the story of the wine, not the brand of the wine, not the label of the wine. One thing to think about the psalm, it's important, it's gotta go to the racetrack and you get the tower sheet. Buying a new bottle of wine is always a wager. I bet my 50 bucks, my 10 bucks, my 100 bucks, I bet 100 bucks I like this bottle of wine. You'd feel a lot better on that bet if somebody, that's the same at the racetrack, and said, oh, I know this horse, I know that jockey, they're going to do good. So that helps the people with their wager to buy that bottle of wine. Is it going to be a finisher for them? Is, it gonna, is the bet going to pay off? And they help people make good bets. Usually people with a sports background or some highly competitive nature tend to find their way into the psalm profession. Uh, they want to be experts in a given field. They want to be the best they can be in a given field. So there's this diploma called the Master Sommelier Diploma. It's the highest achievement you can make uh, in the world of wine. Over 40 years, there's only been like 170 in the world. 40 years. When someone tells you this is something that a lot of people can't do, people either go, wow, that's impressive, or they say, wow, I want to do that. This is not practice anymore, you know? It's like this is why you train as for this day. I cried when my parents died. I cried when my children were, uh, were born. The only other time outside of that that I cried was when I passed this exam.
The exam is three parts. There is a theory exam. It's a comprehensive knowledge of wine laws, wine regions. Name a winery from Ukraine. It's pretty amazing the amount of information you have to know. The entire world of wine, spirits, sake, beer, cigars, the regions, the sub-regions, the districts, the villages. It's in five languages, Portuguese, Spanish, Italian, German, French, Hungarian. Then you've got service. The service portion of the exam, we set up a mock restaurant environment. You have to demonstrate cool, calm, collect, professional behavior in this radically bizarre environment. And it's very difficult. And then there's the tasting. You have three whites, three reds, basically four minutes, 10 seconds per wine. And you need to describe the wine accurately. Uh, you're describing the structure, the body, the alcohol, whether the wine's from a warm climate or cool climate, new world, old world, possible varietals, possible age range, and take a deep breath and say what you think the wine is. I've never worked harder at anything, you know, coming up to this. So every moment of my life has been, you know, waking up, how am I going to prepare for this exam? Before I go to bed, I'm going to stay an extra three hours up and sleep less to prepare for this exam. You know, I'm going to choose not to go out and stay home and study, you know. Ian is about as talented as an individual as you'll see in this profession. He's the Rudd Scholar of our last advanced exam, which is the highest score. I think Ian gravitated towards wine because, uh, first of all, it's uh, an intoxicant. <laughs> and it's fun. So it goes into that valve, and then it just goes free run gravity pan. down. Yeah, down there. And some people like to put all the juice into a tank and let it settle overnight. I just go straight into the barrel. I think the most important thing in Ian's life is wine. If, and then family, and then, of course, me. I have some vintage footage of when he's a little knucklehead at eight and 10 years old, and he's holding a glass of wine at a, a Thanksgiving dinner and talking about the nuances of the wine. It tastes like it has no alcohol. But I don't know where that came from, because at that point in time, no one in our family was into describing wine and going over the flavor profiles. Wine 1 is a white wine, clear, star bright. There's no evidence of gas reflocculation. The one is a light straw core, consistent to green reflections in the edge, medium concentration of color. Aroma's coming out of like this lime candy, lime zest, <sighs> crushed apples, underripe green mango, underripe melon, melon skin, green pineapple, and pop. One is bone dry, really this like crushed slate and crushed chalky note, like crushed hillside. There's white florals, almost like a fresh cut flower, white flowers, white lilies, no evidence of oak. There's a kind of a fresh, like that freshly opened can of ten tennis balls and like, a, <laughs> seriously, and a fresh new rubber hose I get. <laughs> What's the new one? Good, I like that. Structure. Acids medium plus, alcohol is medium, complexity is medium plus. In this conclusion, this one is from the New World, from a temperate climate, possible grapes are Riesling, possible countries are Australia, age range is one to three years. I think this can only be one thing. Uh, this wine is from Australia, this wine is from South Australia, this wine is uh, from Clare Valley, 2009 Riesling high quality producer. Wine one is Clare Valley Riesling. Good. If you're really serious, if you really want to become an MS, you can't do it alone. You have to, you have to find a great support group, a mentor, uh, and you need to be in an environment where there's wine around you all the time. So uh, whenever you're ready. Wine number two is a uh, clear, uh, star bright white wine of uh, medium concentration. Uh, again, got a paler uh, yellow here with a glint of green. Um, no evidence of gas nor sediment in the wine. Viscosity is. And we'll call that medium. I, I got into wine because I was working in restaurants to get through college. It was a restaurant that, that served a lot of wine. My degree is in, uh, in geography. He started in wine pretty much right when we met, uh, starting going through the court. Our relationship has been congruent with his 
testimonials through the test. When you dig into a, a specific region of the world, I mean, you're not just learning about the grapes or the, the, the vines, you're learning about the people, you're learning about the history, the culture, you know, the food. Uh, so you, it's almost a, a way of traveling through the world. Wine number three is a, more of a medium gold with green reflections. We're going to do a watery meniscus. The wine is day bright, no evidence of gas, flocculants, or sediment. Concentration is medium. My husband's a bull in the china shop. He's a, you know, like a man's man, athletic. I basically was a baseball player who supplemented college with restaurant jobs. He was never going to make it as a professional athlete, so, uh, and so he ended up evaluating wine. I've got into this relatively recently, so I have very little seasoning, very little experience. He went from really knowing nothing about wine, other than he wanted to be in this industry, to passing his advanced in a year. I wasn't entrenched in this world like a lot of people in my industry are. I, in some respects, feel kind of like a black sheep, like a, the Philistine of the court. You know why I, I'm, I like Pearl Jam? Because I don't know lyrics very well, and I can just make them up and it still sounds good. High energy. I mean... I see you recognize People who meet him for the first time are like, is he always like this? It's like, yeah, he is. Wine number four is a red wine. This wine is Starbright. This wine is a bright red ruby color, fit into a hot pink room variation, medium concentration, a very, very light standing in the tears. Viscosity is medium, plus no gas, no sediment. On the nose, wine is clean, could correct no obvious flaws. This wine is a moderate plus intensity, moderate plus how one of those confirm this wine is very young, very bright, very youthful. Wine and Spirits Magazine had just named me best new sommelier in America, along with my good buddy Ian Cobble. I wanted to be a particular person that I saw in a restaurant. Dapper, Italian cut suit, pointed toe shoes, wonderful black serviette draped over his forearm, bottle held high. I told myself, I can be him, I have to be him, I will be him. When I first met Dylan, I knew that he was going to be one of those rising stars because he had those intangibles, you know? He was engaging, he's personable, he's smart. Dylan's an actor, and he's a beautiful floor man. We call him Senor Smooth. When you look good, you're confident, you feel good. The best way to take care of your guests by looking good. You're following some of the most dedicated, obsessed people. Sage, truffle, wet forest floor, decaying soil, decaying dried red rose petals, that, that decaying animal skin. Wine on its own is not a complicated thing. We're talking about fermented grape juice, right? There's basically only one species of grapevine that we use to make wine, and that's called Vitis vinifera. You know, the history of wine is fascinating. I mean, it's been spread by humans since the Neolithic period. It's been written about since the third millennium BC. When you study wine, you study history because it's all hooked up. If you ever bothered to read the Bible, it tends to be part of the sacrament. in Italia e che ha visto che nel Vangelo l'unico miracolo che è stato chiesto dalla Madonna a suo figlio è, è, è sul vino. The ancient Greeks brought to Italy. The Romans brought to France, Germany, Spain and most of Europe where the oldest vineyards still make wine today. I mean the Roman army marched on wine. They didn't drink water, too dangerous to drink water. So they drank wine. La région La première des origines qui est très intéressante, c'est de ce que l'on oublie très simplement, c'est que dans le monde du vin, l'origine du vin était la première méthode de purification de l'eau. Well, the Romans had all the original plantings, and then in the Dark Ages, what came out of it were the monks. And obviously, in their world, what are the things they did all day? Eat, sleep, pray, work, drink. Well, of those five, what sounds like the most fun?
the bottle I'm showing you is Johannesburg Riesling from 1735, which is uh, one of the oldest, if not the oldest, still existing white wine in the world. When the Spanish discovered the New World, they brought Vitis vinifera. Now it grows in Chile, Argentina, Mexico, California. The Dutch, the French, and the British spread it to their empires. The Eastern United States, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, Canada, and so on. You think about wine, it's about where men went. It's about history, rivers. It's about geology, geography, and all these things are opened up to your mind as you, as you taste, you know. It's, it's such a cool thing. The world of wine is always growing. How could someone possibly know everything about it? It's not just history, it's the way it's grown, it's the way it's made, how it's stored, why certain years were good, how to serve it, what to eat with every different kind of wine. That's why the Court of Master Sommeliers exists. The highest level is called the Master Exam. It's a three-day test that can only be taken once a year, and it covers just about everything. The first exam was held in the UK in 1969. In 1984, an American passed all three parts on his first try. That was Fred Dane. So now I have a glass of wine, I'm like, is this it? Am I done? All that, all that, there's the diploma, I've got it all, I've got this, that, I've got, you know, the greatest, one of the greatest wine cellars in America. This is, this is as far as we go? I don't think so. I think we'll bring this to America. We all owe Fred, period. I mean, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. You always want to have a chance to be better than you are. And you do that by setting incredibly hard levels for people to uh, not only to prepare themselves for, to understand who they are. I mean, if I didn't have children, I never would have passed the measures. I never would have worked that hard. Hands down, the most difficult thing I've ever done in my life. No question, it's the hardest thing I've ever done, period. I, I see these young kids now, they tell me they're gonna be a master, and I laugh, and I go, good, good luck with that. To be an outstanding sommelier, you have to be incredible, an incredible taster. And not only just to taste wine, but also to identify wine without knowing the label because that's the way you can explain to a guest. What happens when you learn to blind taste is it increases your perception. You know what's going on in the wine so you can evaluate the wine better. So you want to explain what's in the glass. And the only way you can explain that to the guest is by knowing the wine ourselves. When you get to that point of being able to very regularly identify you know, the wine, you know that your senses and your understanding of the wine are to the point where you really get it. All right, all right, gentlemen, you got two weeks left. You're each gonna do two wines. They're fastballs, they're ready to go. You just, I just want you to get them right. Um, describe them well, do them in time, you know your format, but uh, the wines are there to be gotten. So figure out what's important in the wine, what you need to know, and get the wine right. Get the wine right. You got about eight minutes to do these two wines, and they're ready for you. Am I going through the grid? You're going through the grid. Sugar, acid, tannin, intensity, alcohol, body, fruit, earth, wood, non-fruit, non-earth, non-wood, complex, good, balanced, finish. There was the grid, right? That, the tasting grid. All right, wine number one is a uh, medium straw, kind of lemon yellow with golden green reflections moving to a watery meniscus. Nose is clean, uh, youthful, uh, high intensity aromas. Maybe a little lanolin, wet wool, chalky limestone minerality. Mandarin, tangerine peel. Paul Thorne, Acacia, get some chamomile on it. I want to confirm the salinity. Characters coming out of uh, grapefruit pith, uh, lemon, lemon seeds, a little bit of lime skin. The skill of blind tasting, or what I'd rather call deductive tasting, it's learned. You're driving down this road, and it goes in two directions, right? And you're seeing two wines, Cab Franc and Syrah. One path takes you to Chinon, one path takes you to the Northern Rhone, all right? When you hit that point and you're looking at is that olive or is that green bell pepper, right? Is that tobacco or is that smoked meat? And what did you decide? Smoked, smoked meat. meat. Who makes great samurai swords? The person that's gonna make a great samurai sword 
is the person who had a teacher, who had a teacher, who had a teacher. We, we always think of this with wine, oh, it must be a natural wine taster. Nobody ever says, well, they must be a natural samurai sword maker. Uh, every, every week I used to go to the farmer's market, even today I go, I smell everything, I smell the herbs, I smell the, I smell the plants, I smell all the dishes I eat, because you have to keep your palate alive. It's something you just have to keep on doing so that when you get to a wine glass and you smell it, automatically you think, okay, that's what jasmine smells like. That's what key lime smells like. How many people have have actually smelled a dried violet versus a, a rotten violet versus a fresh violet? And those are characters in wines you smell. A young Nebbiolo will have that kind of violet and raspberry flavor. An old Nebbiolo is gonna have a dried violet flavor. But if you don't, if you've never smelled a dried vi violet, how are you gonna know what is in the wine? Well, it has a, a lemon peel note. Oh, well, where did they get the lemon peels? Is that from the same vineyard? <laughs> yes, I know. No way. The stuff is not in the wine, but all of the, all the chemical compounds that make anything smell uh, like it smells um, can be created by fermentation. Basically, it's, it's a combination of yeast and then aging and then the fruit in the vineyard. And this smell is a, is a really funny thing. It's, it's so personal and you know, we all have these, these smells that come up where you're like, oh my God, I know that smell. Sauvignon Blanc, people smell like cat pee. And it does, it actually, you know, you get a, a Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand and it does smell a little like cat pee. We use the word black currant bud. That, that's kind of our code, you know, that's, that's the way we describe cat pee. Well, one of our favorites for Riesling is, is pool toy, you know, it's like the new, brand new plastic that you're, you know, you're blowing up for your child to go play with in the pool. Clear Valley Riesling, you actually put your nose in there and it smells a little bit like a freshly opened tennis ball and a little bit of synthetic rubber, like just opened rubber hose. Ian's uh, fresh tennis ball. There's a new one, but it's like the third time I've heard it now. Uh, I don't think I'll ever use it because I think it's ridiculous. Uh, one of my favorite descriptors uh, is um, um, granny purse. Or your grandmother's closet. It's like, first of all, I don't know your grandmother. Second of all, I don't know what the hell your closet smells like. You can, you can picture this kind of dusty old leather smell with maybe a little bit of perfume or lipstick or something. An important descriptor in wine is being able to describe the earth. The earthy, some wines aren't earthy at all. Some are organic and taste like compost or garden soil. Some are more like wet rocks or slate. It's like a sidewalk on a hot day after there's water on it. You know how rocks or minerals are a common um, smell in a lot of wines? Start licking rocks. Just don't cut that. No, you start, you never done that? Yeah, like you like lick rocks or like, just understand what that is. To become so obsessed with a subject that you're gonna dedicate so much energy and passion and time and emotional, you know, heartbreak into it that you have to be a, a, just, you know, maybe a little bit off. Take it home. Okay, there's meat on this wine. This wine is from France. This wine is from the Rhone Valley. This wine is from the Northern Rhone. This is Saint Joseph 2008, cold vintage, high quality producer. Great job. I mean, you're in the zone, right? You're doing exactly what you need to do. It's exactly the way you need to taste. Fantastic. So you're you were you're there. Way to go, Dad. Dad, Dad, <laughs> dear old Dad. Oh, Dad. We call him Dad. We call Ian Dad because he uh, he loves to be the father, dude. Like he likes to sit you down, and tell you exactly what you're doing wrong, why you're doing it. Here's to Dad. <laughs> You just got the pin, buddy. Let's go. Jesus. You know, there's two ways to approach it. You can either, you know, have the spit cups out, have the timer out, and be doing like very formal tastings, um, or you can kind of just, you know, have a, have a relaxed night and have a couple of drinks. When the guys get together, it's like a, a storm comes through here. You know, there's a lot of trash talking. There's a lot of uh, making fun of each other. It's like wine geeks unite. I love you, Sam. I love you, Frodo. <laughs> Oh, Sam. <laughs> I know! Every scene, right? Sam. Frodo. Mr. Frodo. Wait, what is that from? Uh, what? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, they hound each other pretty hard. But I think more than anything else, it's just to motivate each other. You know, the competitive nature, they all feed off of it. it it's kind of necessary in this environment. It pushes one another forward. They'll spend the whole evening just giving each other a hard time. The wine is clearly ripe, but has acid too and a lot of herbaceousness. Got black pepper and smoky meat. It is unoaked. Takes me to one place. 
Northern Rhone. I think this is Southern Rhone. I think this is Southern Rhone with a lot of Syrah. I'm gonna call 04, um, 04 Vake Ross. That is a ballsy call, dude. 04 Vake Ross, why? Are right, you laying your balls on the table? Hey, I laid my balls out okay, and said, Call Road T08. Okay. Are you sticking with your Northern Rhone caller? Of course. I can't call, I can't go back now. Just because Cobbler's trying to talk me out of it. Shit's Northern Rhone. Is it Northern? It's Northern Rhone. Who is it? OJ. It's funny. They're like, they're like guys in a locker room, you know, with wine bottles. <laughs> and what's a fresh cut garden hose? Uh, you've never smelled that before? Why don't you cut your garden hose garden in the first? No, Willie, yeah. no, Willie, Willie, Willie Sher actually taught me that. Willie Wait, Sher. We I said that. I didn't understand that you smelled garden hose, but water I said new yeah, garden water hose. Like fresh cut water hose. You can't oh, freshly cut a garden hose. Yeah. No, that just like I've been taught. rubber. Okay, so who taught you that? So I, why don't you tell me how to taste them? I mean, shit, fuck. It's not like they're consuming, you know, Pellegrino all night. So as it goes on, I think that opening more bottles sounds like a great idea. Those great ideas you have at 2 o'clock in the morning. Hi, mate. You want another wine? Or are you done? Or how do you feel? They do it until they are just, like, exhausted. Uh, I could never imagine keeping a friend if I played with them like they play with each other. Ian's definitely the most serious one, I wanted to say. So good. Dad has the floor. Or does she want to step it up? You guys want to, you guys want the whole thing? I want you to fucking go for it. Okay, it's a, it's a red wine. This wine is uh, medium clear. The wine is bright. There's no evidence of gas flocculation. The wine has a dark ruby core, consistent to the edge where there's a, an orange rim. Call viscosity medium plus. Medium plus? Do you want to change my collar? I was just repeating it. Yeah. Okay, why don't you finish it up? Go with your heart. I'm not going to continue. What? Oh, my no. God. Kindles. No, no, no. If he wants to continue, no, you can come. Let him rock the do you wanna, wine. Do you want to do the wine? Let him rock the wine. Let him rock the no, wine. No, I just don't need the whole peanut gallery. If you want to do it, you can do it. The children are acting up. I've had a long day, the and I'm going to do the wine, up. or what? We're trying to focus for the exam, and I think that's my point. You know, that's what I love about you, is you get upset, and then immediately you're over it, and you, you know, you got that thing. Yeah. <laughs> so you're serious. not quite over it now, but you're going to be there. Yeah, I kind of don't want to do the line now. So now you have to do the line after you did that whole bit, man. There's no way getting out of that shit. I mean, I think it's just, like, after the last 25 minutes of, like, constantly fucking with me, and then I just hit a point of, like, not wanting to take anymore. You guys are all my best friends, and, like, you understand? Okay. And to uh, untuck it, taste the wine, and let's go ahead and, and do it dirty. Wine's clean, developing, medium plus intensity of aromas. <laughs> all right, mate. Stay focused. Dude, gonna have... this is just going to go to the next person. I'm just too irritated right now. I, I can understand it. I know. You but dish it out a lot, brother. You know, I know. We hey. bring it on each other. I know. Hey, I understand I that. It while, just gets man. to a point sometimes. It's all good. It just, just gets to a point sometimes when it's just right. irritating. Well, well, let's show you some respect to dad. To, to dad. See, I'm not okay. even in on that because you get pissed at me. No, it's all good. No, he it's likes good. dad. He likes, he knows I'm all dad. good with it. A lot of times they'll do a tasting and they'll leave their spit buckets out and I end up cleaning them. The spit bucket is this thing that I find at 8 o'clock in the morning. You know, it's like when they don't want to drink the wine, they spit it in the spit bucket. And I come home, and there's, there's actual spit wine that's like a pink shade. And I have to clean it out. And they often use our dish like where? You know, like our cups, or back into like a wine glass. Yeah, the spit bucket's gross. The happiest person when you pass is not you. It's your spouse. And they're just like, thank God. Like, you know, can, can, can we be done with this? Sometimes I'm like, wow, this is just a cool world that I get to be a part of and see. And they are so brilliant. And then at the same time, they're just egomaniacs who are so self-absorbed. Your husband or boyfriend disappears, becomes a shell of themselves for months on end, only to probably 95% chance get defeated. It's hard. My wife basically told me, you know, upon my fourth attempt at the MS exam, honey, if you don't pass it this time, we need to talk. You miss a lot of, a lot of life moments go by when you're preparing for this. And I'll be honest, it's tough. And 
It's worth it in the end. I tell everyone, listen, everything that you've missed comes back tenfold. Theory probably takes the most time uh, just because you're, you have so much to go through. The theory exam is an oral examination where a panel of the masters barrage you with some of the most obscure questions you could possibly imagine about wine. What are the, the approved um, QWPSR regions of Romania, Bulgaria? Even the language alone, close, Kloster Neuburger Mostwaga, I mean, pronouncing these words. Germany seems to be hard for people, and, and yeah, it's, a, it's a big long words and a, an interesting language. And We start with uh, Trittenheimer Altärchen. Egon Müller in Schatzhof. Then we have here the Braunenberger Jufa and Braunenberger Jufa Sonnenur. Kesselstadt in Trier. Rara Himmelreich. Dr. Losen. Saarburger Rausch. Brooklyn Wolf. Uh, Silvana. Uh, Kerner. Müller Thurgau. Rauburgunder. Weißburgunder. Spätburgunder. Regent, you have Domina, you have, uh, what did I forget, Karna, did I say that? People have a difficulty with Italy for some reason. The names of the grapes, there's 3,000 in Italy alone. Se una persona viene qua e vuol conoscere tutte le varietà italiane, può essere veramente impossibile. Solo pochi pazzi, forse, dedicando tutta la vita, riuscirebbero a, a capire per bene tutte le nostre varietà. It's not uncommon that these guys are spending eight, 10 hours a day, every day, living and breathing this stuff. The other wives that I know and dread the note cards and the hours and hours of studying where they just have to be, it's like another job. Flash cards everywhere. I think uh, I've got somewhere probably in the vicinity of 4,000 flash cards. Standing in the line at the grocery store going through my flash cards, I, you know, I had a stoplight. No cards. Flash cards. We are going to have a bonfire with all of his note cards. And I go to bed if I can, but sometimes I'll be like, you can't remember that flash card. You go back to the desk for a quick second. You're just manic. It's crazy. It's a blank one. You know, sometimes you get so tired that you forget to write the answer on it. That's the worst part. At night, I contemplate my reasons cause I want to know it's right. I might just be demented, but I'll stay here and fight cause I want you. Without you, I get lonely and stuck in my head. Obsession is the reason that I lay awake in bed. I kick myself for barking when I should have said that I want you. Ian, Ian's day is, is definitely different. He, uh, he sleeps in very late. He's, he's more of a night guy, so he does a study in late night. Ian's big at tracing maps. Before you can study a specific region of the world, you have to understand the geography of it. So I found that um, tracing maps has been a huge help. What I do is I'll take a major map area from some professional site and uh, lay it over the top and then trace it and then basically look at a number and I should know where that region is and how it refers to the world of wine. And I should know the laws about it. So, you know, Mentrita or wherever it might be, or Rioja, what the subregions are, or Canterbury or Rios Baixas or Valde Oras or Bierzo, or wherever it might be. You know, if you try to remember something and you don't have a specific reference to where the area is, it doesn't really make any sense. Now when I get a question immediately, my mind goes to a specific area of the world. I can see a map and see the region, and then the information unfolds in my brain. And that's how I kind of um, now memorize information and catalog it in my brain because, you know, it's, the mind's weird. And, and if you create these geographical locations, you can then store information there. I don't know how that works, but uh, it, uh, it does, it does. Ian? Ian is... Tracing maps and 
Ian is uh, sitting in front of Skype waiting for me to call him. Ian is hard to be around right now. I'm about to call Dustin Wilson on Skype in about 20 minutes and trying to, you know, make sure I know my flashcards or else he's going to, you know, break me down. And uh... I think he feels like if he doesn't put enough pressure on himself, then he's not doing it right. You wake up and what is your first thought? You know, it's the flashcards you haven't remembered. It's the wines that could possibly come up on the exam that you don't completely feel, you know, confident with. Dusty and I did that to ourselves. We'd be like crying in the field position. This is just, it's just pure dedication. I mean, it's just pure obsession. There's no other way around it. But somehow he puts himself through hell and manages to show up on game day and perform. He's, I've seen it time and time again at competitions, at exams. We love the guy, we wanna see him crush, but we don't, he's not doing himself any favors right now. He's not it's the only way he knows how to be for this though. I think sleep's very important. Sleep's incredibly important for you to be able to retain knowledge and, and do this. Um, what, was this, what was I talking about? He's the only person that can be that way and, and still pull it out. It's possible that uh, it'll never stop but then it's possible that nine days from now it'll be over. And the thought of that is just so amazing. The thought of like when I sit there and think about like the feeling if I do pass this exam, it will just be like the most glorious thing ever to have happened, you know? And that's like all I want is to pass this so bad. I want it to be done. I dream about being on a beach without a thought of a flashcard. I dream about like, you know, drinking a, a beer and like just not thinking about wine for a little bit. I wonder if I can, like I just doubt I can. I, I want to pass this and be done with it and I want my life to start and my marriage to be cool. <laughs> Get back to a normal life would be phenomenal. You know, I do have a wife, I've been told. You know, Rachel's been watch, watching me do this for our entire relationship. We're gonna have a ton of time to actually Go on a date. <laughs> All the work that I've done, what I've learned, I just have to let it, let it, let it happen, really. The other thing that will take tremendous focus is trying to steer clear of Ian. Sorry, buddy, to say this. Steering clear of him at the exam. Because he's going to want to just pound flashcards and just sit there and do theory all day. <laughs> All right, yeah, I need uh, about two minutes to get set up here. Yeah, usually we take our clothes off, um, <laughs> but uh, tonight we're going to leave our clothes on. Butage. Butage is uh, taking the dirt and covering the stump and the base of the roots, usually protecting from frost. Good. The name of the bacteria? That causes Pierce's disease. It'll uh, spread by the glassy wing sharpshooter. Oh, we talked about this one. So if I said, name three bacterial diseases, you would say three bacterial diseases are one, Pierce's disease, two, crown gall, Three bacterial blight. All right, buddy. We'll listen uh, tomorrow night, midnight. See you then. Okay. Later, buddy. Okay, All right. Good work. Bye. When you work in a restaurant, if you have a tough table or uncooperative clients or people that are just plain nasty, you don't just throw up your hands, pack your bags, and leave. Let's go do service. I would like some white tea now. The land you're going to start, number three, in the back of Fred. What we set up was an almost impossible situation, and it was planned that way, to see how these cans responded under a tremendous pressure from two very difficult customers. You like one. Pink one. Pink one. Pink one. Yeah. Wonderful. How do we like it, Drew? Cold. Very cold. 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 You know how you spell cold? C O L D. He 
He's spinning. Okay. It's cold now. You would probably like your white wine or rosé wine to be at, a, at about at about 48 to 53 degrees. Pardon? Conversion. I want you to convert this wine. To, to Celsius? Cold. Oh, cold, cold, cold. 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 Well, uh, yes, indeed. Uh, cold, oh, oh. I can't express myself any more clearly. Because, because I'm making you wait, I will, I will take care of the cocktails for you. I just want cold wine. Now he's trying to bribe us with free drinks. What kind of operation are you running here, son? Cold. We want cold, cold wine. Maybe we should spell it out and hold it up. Cold. Maybe. Let me try that. Cold. Cold. Gentlemen, I believe this may do it for you. Okay. And I apologize, I'm currently out of the 1998. I do have the 1997 Litterai, 1997 Van Gris. Oh. Okay. Well, Let's do it. Let's have some. That's as cold as it's gonna get, right? Yes, indeed. Okay. Brutal. Absolutely brutal. Chilling wine is a very tough thing to do, but there are some really great tricks to it if you know what you're doing. And not very many of them did. So as a result, it was a total failure. If you don't know it, get out. You don't deserve to be a song. Fix it, learn it, do it, go. Okay, today's tasting is for Brian McClintock. Okay, he's in his exam in a couple of weeks. And uh, the reds I picked are pretty straightforward. Just a couple little twists today to see if he's on his game. Fred Dame is, he's larger than life. He is, he is such a personality. I think that most other candidates, as well as most other masters, would probably be, would agree with me that, that Fred is probably one of the most intimidating people in the, the entire court. You know, I was afraid of Fred. The whites are kind of funny today because I picked uh, aromatic whites, two aromatic whites to start, which are always difficult. Fred Dame is supposed to instill the fear of God in people. We'll see if uh, Mr. McClintock has his, uh, has his wits about him. I've heard legends about his tasting abilities. The legend of him daming the exam. You know, I've heard the story that he went to his, his MS exam. Daming it means that you just smell it and you know the vintage, the great variety, the country, the subregion, just on the nose. So, uh, you know, it's kind of like, you know, three seconds, say, hey, what is it? We got how many days left there, champ? We have 10 days left. You ready? Ready as I'm gonna be. That's not good enough. Yes, I'm ready. That's a better answer. I don't want to hear that other kind of answer. <laughs> Very intriguing. Why do you think you find this amusing? This is it. Okay. You know? We've got 10 days. All right. Otherwise, it's another year. Mm -hmm. Want to wait another year? No. No, that would suck, wouldn't it? It would suck. He still, to some degree, intimidates me. Six wines, 25 minutes. Okay. And I need your best effort. Give you everything I got. That's what I expect. Fred Dame's got a photographic memory. You know, you can click down five dominoes and realize where those dominoes are gonna go. Fred can do a thousand. Do you like the little trap I laid for you? You sure fell for it. Did I? Yeah, that doesn't Two sound good. Did I flip flop them? Well, the minute you call it Chardonnay, I knew you were doing because the third one is a Chardonnay. He, he can be really um, scary. I mean, I've seen him yell at people during their tastings. You punished yourself because you went to the old world. Remember, this is the masters. Right. Okay? Can't do that. That hurt. <laughs> Here. He's a lot more fun after a glass of wine. And even more fun after two. Your comment, the only thing that comes to mind? Possible great varietals include, I consider Muscadet neutral, Pinot Grigio's neutral, Chablis. The only things that are coming to mind. I, I don't give a squat what comes to your mind, neither does anybody else. And all this, I think, and all, is just wasting time. All right? Get rid of it. Now. Number five. This sucks. He said, let's go play some pool. I'm really good at it. And uh, I went, this guy does everything. I mean, and I, you know, I was a Wisconsin junior state champion and I was a road player, right? I played, I'm, I'm fairly proficient in pocket billiards. And I went, Fred plays, he does, this guy is a god, right? And then we went fishing, and I brought up all this wine to impress the great Fred Dame, right? So I brought up these really fancy wines. And so we're going fishing, and we're going halibut fishing, pretty bloody, gutty kind of fishing, if you've ever done this, you know? And there's a lot of shooting the halibut in the brain so it dies. And, and we went to this, this little upscale pool room in Aspen. And uh, he goes, Mr. Bernholm, bring the 1990 Jamais Coat Routine. It's fantastic stuff. I said, well, Fred, you know, come on. We're out in the middle of the ocean, and 
we can't bring glass on the boat, and, you know, there's blood and guts. I don't, he's like, just burn home. But I was so scared, I drank wine like it was water, which I've never done in my life till that point then, and I've never done it again. I drank it like, like a glass of water. Look, look, look. I was scared of Fred Dane. Oh, man, and then, I mean, I mean there's like octopus, you know, wrapping around my leg and gripping onto me, and they're shooting things down, and I'm sitting there with this styrofoam cup of one of the greatest wines, one of the greatest vintages of Cote Routy from one of the greatest producers, and Fred's like, pour me something. I put a cue in his hand, and in two seconds, I went, this guy is a man, <laughs> because he couldn't play at all. <laughs> and to this day remains the greatest cl glass of wine I've ever had. Back to the drawing board. Could have get him out now. No, no, not back. That is absolutely the wrong attitude. That you have no chance. Don't, don't even bother going. Save the money. You're not going back to drawing board. You're doing exactly what you did, right? You're very good taste. All things are there. Just don't make it harder than it is. Thank you. Nice job. Thanks for taking nice the time. Job. This no. is helpful. You're gonna be okay. Uh, believe me, when, when I was actually going through the whole process, there were a number of times where I asked myself whether I was actually, why I was doing it. Six months later, suddenly the, the phone starts ringing for opportunities um, to travel, to speak, um, to teach. Slowly but surely, your life gets better and better and better. And I'm a great example of that. You know, when I first uh, started in this program, I didn't even own a suit. You know, I borrowed a suit for the master's exam. It's been valuable beyond, beyond words for me, for my, my business. And I'm sure that um, these guys will probably figure that out when they pass as well. Your uh, head looks like it's in good shape, nice and shaved. So we'll begin with you. a little scruffy ready. today. A little scruffy today? Yeah, be nice really... and polished up for the exam, though. Excellent. Um, your tastings have always been very fluid. They have great pacing um, with a lot of great descriptors. And I suspect that today will be no different. Ian, um, haven't seen you in a little bit, but um, you've been tasting well, I hear. So um, we'll go through this uh, tasting and remember um, that's a time tasting. Are you doing relaxation techniques? Absolutely not. Well, I drink coffee all the time and stay up late and study. <laughs> well, relax. Take care of yourself. Eat right. Sleep right. Um, go watch a movie. Go have a massage. Do the things that will help mm. you relax. And that that's sounds good. good. <laughs> <laughs> but I really think that that's a key thing. But above all, especially now as you get closer, and you can tell that there's kind of like the light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. Um, anxiety and nervousness manifest itself in different ways with different people. So just, you know, maybe for the next week or so, um, maybe do one or two more tastings and relax. So when you get to the first one, I'll go ahead and start timing it. Ready? Yep, when you're ready, you're ready. Wine one is a white wine, the one is clear, the one is day bright. There's no evidence of gas reflocculation in my glass. Nose is clean, youthful, uh, medium plus intensity of aromas. Uh, we've got kind of candied citrus here. Lemon curd, really ripe lemon, candied lemon. Palette. Dry wine. Medium plus body. <sighs> Alcohol. Wine's dry, <clears throat> medium plus body. Wine's dry, full body. No signs of new oak on the wine. There's a lot of new French oak on this wine. Appears to be some oak on this wine, some vanilla, some cloves, cinnamon, baking spices. Cinnamon, nutmeg, cardamom, baking spices. So I want to change that. There is uh, cinnamon, nutmeg, clove, vanilla, some baking spices. Acid's medium. Acidity on the wine is Medium. Acid is uh, medium plus. Uh, Initial conclusion, uh, this is an old world wine. Possible grape varietals include Chardonnay, Marsan Roussan. This one is from the New World, from a warm climate due to the medium acid and the high alcohol. Very glossy, very extracted, lots of glycerol. Uh, Chardonnay from Burgundy. It's possible this is a very ripe modern Burgundy as well, but I mean, I have to go with my gut here. Final conclusion, this is Chardonnay from France. It's from Burgundy. I'm gonna say uh, old world France. Um, it's burgundy, uh, 
Clovis 2006. Final conclusion, this wine is from the United States. This wine is from California. This wine is from Sonoma County. This wine is from the Russian River Valley. The grape is Chardonnay um, from the 2008 vintage from a high quality producer. Wine number two is a white wine. The one is clear. Viscosity is medium plus. Medium plus. We call viscosity high on this one as well. In the nose, the wine is clean. Clean, youthful. First thing that's coming out here is uh, some peachy apricot notes. Canned peaches. A little bit of peach, slightly oxidized white peach. Doesn't appear to be any new oak on the wine. No signs of oak. Light hint of oak. About. Well, this wine is dry. The wine is dry. The acid is medium minus. Medium minus. Medium. Alcohol is high. 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 This is Viognier from France, from Rhone Valley, Northern Rhone. This is Condru. I think this wine is from France. This wine is from the Rhone Valley. This wine is from the Northern Rhone Valley. This is a Roussan Marsan blend from the, the Hill of Hermitage. New World, uh, North America, California. Uh, Close Viognier from Sonoma County, 2000 and 2009 vintage. Wine number three is a uh, clear, star bright white wine. This is clean, youthful, uh, again, high intensity of aromas. Fantastic. Not sure where to go with this. I'm gonna go back to that wine. Wine number five. Flailing here. Um, wine is well-balanced uh, with a medium plus length, medium plus complexity, and this conclusion. <sighs> oh, falling apart here. Um, I'll call Brunello de Montalcino 2004. Stop. Vintage. Stop the time. When you go in and you take that test, you're going to have exactly the same kind of feelings, right? Yeah. It's going to be this feeling of helplessness that if I take a left turn, I'm going to, my back's going to be against the wall. So this is a good thing. At this point, you know, being so close to the exam, I was kind of keeping my fingers crossed for like a confidence booster. This is what wine number two is, and you might be familiar with this. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. This is a wine that, for you, didn't have much oak on it. Is this is this happening right now? I don't know. You tell me. This is not the not a perfect flight today. I didn't. I wouldn't have passed my MS. This is what this wine is. It's new old chard. Yeah. Does it smell like chardonnay? It does smell like chardonnay? Does it taste like chardonnay? It does taste like chardonnay? Kind of the same thing we had when we had the older white burgundy before, right? Does it? Look like burgundy? Does it taste like burgundy? It does not taste like burgundy. At this point, I need to, I need to chill because I'm way too worked up. This is what wine number two is. I think uh, will you smell this wine? This is my wine one. I think that you guys switched them. I didn't pour the wine, so. I poured the red, but. That's let me see. That's that. California Chardonnay. This is Hermitage. We got it right. Really? Yeah. Could I, could Everybody somebody... struggled with this. Really? Yeah. Wine number two is sweeter than wine number one. I'm tasting this right now, and I taste Behringer. I sell a lot of it. I'm tasting this. and So you guys pour these? Yeah. Well, let's leave it at that for okay, now. Okay, no problem. Re revisit I'll, I'll, we'll taste them in a minute. I'm just very confused because okay. I because, go back to them. But there's, and... there's a reason why I put them side by side. Okay. Okay, so let's go to wine number three. Um, but I think that you would have both, you agree, and I think you even said this, but it's just like dried red fruit. It's dried red fruit. You keep going back to wine, wine, wine no, number I just, two. I just, I just, so, it's just interesting. So dried, uh, so dried red fruit, um, pomegranate. Can so, you pass me that bottle of Hermitage? Yeah, now you can definitively this. So Ian, what I would say is, because I thought you did a great job I would focus a little bit on my non-fruit aromas, especially some of those other ones, you know, whether it be honey, whether it be tar or spice, and then um, some of the wood indicators, because I think that number, wine number two, has some definitive oak indicators in there that uh, is very, very strong, as well as all three of the white wines, to be honest with you. Um, but other than that, I really don't have much to, to, to criticize you for because I thought you did a great job. Going back to them afterwards, you know, I think I called the right wines when I wanted to, so.
I know that Ian thought that the wines were switched up, and he probably st thinks that as he's driving away. Um, but I did smell the wines, and the wines were correctly poured. I didn't just didn't believe it. It's like somebody told me that I was that I had brown hair. You know, it's like I know I don't. <laughs> like, you know, that's that's what you see. You know, I'm sure a lot of that was predicated on the the anxiety and the nervousness that he's starting to feel now. And I'm sure that as the week goes on, that it'll probably just, you know, get worse. With regards to Ian, Dustin, and myself, I think the best case scenario is obvious. It's the, uh, the worst case scenario that's not so obvious. How do I put this? We, uh, Ian, Dustin, and I are like uh, about as close as three people could be right now. We, I don't know, Dustin and I moved in together. Ian and I have studied for the advance together and we spend pretty much all of our waking time together. We're completely dependent on each other. And if all of us don't get through, it's all good because we still have each other. We still have the core intact. But if one of us passes, it's still all good because two of us are happy for that person. And, you know, the two people still have each other. But the worst case scenario is if two of us pass and one of us doesn't. And I've thought a lot about that. And the reason why it'd be bad is because that one person is all alone, completely alone. He's all by himself. And when those other two get through, he's happy for them, but he's pretty much clapping by himself when they get announced as masters. And when the other two get through, th their job is done. They're not gonna go back to that core. It'll be completely done. And that person will have to, that person will have to like hike Everest by themselves or find another group to latch onto. Because this test is, it, it's almost impossible to pass, but without people, it's, it's incomprehensible. Now these guys now, there's fear. Uh, there's fear in their heart of failure. There's fear of, uh, of someone telling you that you're not good enough. The masters have pretty much already accepted me as family, so I have to deliver. There's uh, hope in their hearts right now that they will pass this exam and not have to study anymore. We want to live our lives again. And we can't until this is over. And. Uh, that thought is always there, you know? And I, I keep thinking about if I don't get through, you know, it's all good, you know, I'll learn more, but I'm a married man, you know, I wanna be a husband. There is a little bit of uh, self-doubt. I'm glad that I'm kind of worked up and falling apart right now because it's, it allows me the chance to rebuild. There's a lot of self-confidence. I have been, you know, tasting incredibly well for the last six weeks, the best I've ever tasted in my life. And if I just continue this going and I think use my gut, um, uh, that's, that's good. What I try to inspire is that you are a warrior and that you must go in and fight and that you're not afraid. You have to fight the good fight at every opportunity you have to pass this examination. Passport, got it. It's in my back pocket. Dustin realized he didn't have an ID. Yeah. Hey, grab your lunch sack, Dustin Wilson. Oh. Do you feel ready? I feel ready. I feel ready. Yeah. I feel 100% ready. I, I don't feel like we've wasted any time since we moved here. It's almost surreal, to tell you the truth. I'm ready to, to, to uh, for this week to happen. An extra 16 pounds of wine. Have a good day at work. I'll call you when I get there. You going to Dallas? Uh, 305. It's weird, Drop, dropping him off in the airport and 
I'm actually really nervous. I want to say he will pass, but uh, just nervous. Can't wait till Friday comes and then I can just, I want to know right now. Oh my God, they're disgusting. This is crazy, it is crazy. This five days is gonna be horrible, I can tell. Dusty's dreaming about taking his theory exam and answering every single question right. He's thinking about lining up a flight of wines and just knocking them back. Not a care in the world. This is how you handle stress before a big test right here, ladies and gentlemen. Is that in? Yep. Oh, you ready for this? Hell yeah, man. Let's, Let's do go. it. I'm feeling more relaxed than I was last week. Yep. Yeah, it's nice to be here. Just gotta let it flow to let things happen. I know that, that I know it's gonna be a fair test this year. That's what they've made it very clear. I mean, they know that a lot of us got that exam last year that was, I think, a little bit aggressive in terms of difficulty. of Alsace-Lorraine share a turbulent history as a buffer between France and Germany. The Alsatian culture reflects cumulative elements of both societies. This is fun stuff. It's 1.20 in the afternoon right now, the day before the tasting exam. Our fearless father is over there asleep. He's on a strange sleeping schedule. I was dreaming about my cards. How many hours do you plan to study between now and tomorrow? I'll probably do six hours of cards tonight. Just review. OK. You know? And then I'll probably do a lot, like 10 hours tomorrow. Some serious intensity, dude. Dude, I don't want to take this thing again. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. P-R-O-C-T-O-R. -O -O Proctor, Proctor last night. I just hung up with my doc, Dr. Callie. I want to make sure my nose is, is A. A-okay, man. I've got to make sure there's no dryness. This side's working, this side's clogged, and it hops over here, this side's clogged, that side's working. People always talk about the hype of, of, of tasting being 85% nose. Well, at the end of the day, it's true. All right now, man, at the doctor's office so she can check on my left nostril, man, and make sure it's good to go. My right one's clear, my left one's closed. That kind of that kind of sucks for a song when you can't smell anything. You know what I mean? That's like a a runner without any legs. I wanted like just one steroid that I could sleep on overnight, and when I woke up, the steroid would have kicked in if I took it now. And but she was like, honestly, you don't need that. Your nose is not bad enough. So I'm just gonna clean it with a neti pot in the morning, and tonight I am going to. Hit one dose of Afrin in the left nostril, wake up in the morning, one more, one more dose, and, and it's done. And also, she took a look at my finger <laughs> that I cut the tip off of, basically. And she was like, uh, you needed stitches. And I was like, I don't need no stinking stitches, but yeah, I needed stitches. Dusty's in a funny place right now. It's like, I feel like abandoned, like he's my man wife. And I feel abandoned, like he went to he went to the dark side with Sabato, and they're just like studying together. What about the rules from Wall U? Which is age longer, special reserve or extra reserve? A uh, village in Anjou that can add its name to Anjou Village. Can I have a coffee chugging contest? <laughs> <laughs> I think part of it might be he just wants to get away from Kabul. But, uh, and I'm kind of lumped into that equation because I'm rooming with Cobble.
it all comes down to tasting. You know, it's like if you're a betting man, you can bet on theory, you can bet on service too, and feel like, you know, that's a good bet, but very few people can you bet on in tasting. You just don't know how it's gonna play out. On the nose, this wine is clean, cooked, correct, and no obvious flaws. This wine is a moderate plus intensity. This wine is youthful. It's showing bruised aromas of bruised apple, bruised pear, bruised peach, honeysuckle, chamomile, hun uh, lavender, slight botrytis, limestone, wet wool, hay, pistachio, tea. You guys pumped? Will team? Anybody? Oh, oh, that's two. Oh, look what happened. Look what happened. And what should we say? Dad, here's to dad. Here's One, to two, dad. three. Dad. dad. <laughs> I'm getting emotional, man. We're your children. You always will be. Thank you. Even though I'm the youngest, it's kind of weird, but. <laughs> Some people are just old souls. They're born to be fathers, you know? The metamorphosis begins. There, you got the haircut. I'm trying to clean it up from uh, the unkempt mountain man look. So, beard is going bye-bye. Daddy's a young kid again. But that's essentially the bare bones of what I'm gonna look like. Manana for the test. You think I'm gonna wear a wrinkled tie? Yeah. Well, maybe not today. Gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Mr. Cobble. <laughs> I had a feeling you were coming for me. That's Why? Right there. Thanks, buddy. I don't know. Just because you had that smile on your face. I always have a smile on my face. <laughs> good to see you, too. So you walk with them, which feels like you're walking like from hands across America, coast to coast, which is essentially just a room that's 200 yards away. But it's like the death row walk. And the MS is talking to you, and they're... They're giving you, they're like, so, how you feel? <laughs> and they know darn well that you're, you know, for lack of a better word, crap and bricks. And you really don't even want to talk to them. You just want to get in there and get it over with. And you walk in this room. And the first thing you usually see are your wines sitting there. Three whites and three reds. And four MSs looking across a table from you. And so you sit down and everything's super formal and uh, they say something to the effect of well thank you for coming here how do you feel and you say something like it's been an honor which it has and then they're like you have 25 minutes I will start the clock when you touch your first wine we'll start when you're ready I don't know what I can compare it to but I've felt that before I felt that moment where it's almost like an out-of-body experience and it usually happened in sports when the game's on the line in the, in the bottom of the ninth, two outs, and you're standing in the plate and you're almost not even in your own body because it's so surreal. And you don't hear the crowd, you don't hear anything. You don't even really remember anything. I can't believe this is so surreal. I'm nervous, 
but think how nervous my wines are right now. Just sitting there in the glass right now, trembling as I'm about to devour them. How nervous are my wines? I want to do it for my wife more than anything, more than anything. Because she is, uh, she, she deserves to have me not buried in a wine book or buried in no cars or buried in wine glasses. You know, she deserves a husband. It's time. So that'd be a pretty cool gift to give her. Ice on the ground. Wow. Medium plus acid. It's 11 o'clock, those guys have already tasted. Ian and Brian. Dustin has and he's right after me. This is all a sheet of ice, that's fun. Why don't people know how to drive in this, man? Seriously. You can't, you have to have momentum, dude. High gear, high gear. This is the second year Dustin and I have taken it together and uh, we usually kind of remove ourselves from the rest of the world. It's nice to kind of escape that chaos and all the uh, pandemonium that goes on around it so we can just kind of relax beforehand because there's enough stress without, um, without all those people around. So um, we do our thing here and then go over and uh, taste six wines, come back and regroup and get ready for the next stage, so. First thing that happens when everybody gets out of the tasting is they want to find the other people that were tasting simultaneously in another room. And you beat yourself up because someone called this or someone called that. There were, there were two wines I knew. And there were four wines that it came down to two things on. And I could have flip-flopped all of those. I could have hit all of them. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see what Ian called and some other people talking to them. I think either my heart will sink or my heart will be happy after talking to them. Cobble, it's me. Just let, just open the door, dude. I'm not sleeping right now. I assume you have a key. Oh, you I slept like 15 hours. Yeah, I was stressed out. Have you talked to anyone? No, dude, I've been freaking like, just totally going nuts here. Line three. <laughs> Uh, wine three, I called Albarino. Really? What'd you call it? Sancerre. I gotta pick up in the Pyrazine. Dude, wine three was super peachy and it was bitter as fuck. I, I, I may have goofed that wine, dude. Wine five. Wine five, I was torn, dude. I first called it Barolo and I changed it to Brunello, 95. Okay, I call it Barolo. Wine six, I called Barolo. Oh, really? Wine six had tannin that ripped my face off. Yeah. What'd you call that? I call it real. <laughs> it was translucent, it was lifted. I thought it was classic Barolo on wine five. And the six, tan did you did you really smell American oak? No. <laughs> Jesus, dude. I was hoping you were gonna call the same wines. I was gonna hope you're like, oh, Brad's gonna come up and call the same wines. We're gonna feel great. Well, why that why that's bad? Why that's why that's good and, and why it's bad that we're doing this is like, I hope both of us pass. It's, you know, because well, we. That's the worst part about we it. We call completely different things on three wines. And now the worst part is I don't think it's possible we both pass because one of us is, can't be right. Not unless we split the difference and we both get enough that points sucks, to get through. Dude. dude, shit. All right, I need to get up. Quit being.
Dude, I had a fucking crazy, I had a crazy dreams. I had a dream that I was walking by the tasting room and like I saw a bottle of old Rioja. I'm like, oh no. Dude, you look like Michael Douglas and falling down. I mean, it's oh, retarded. You like it? Let's see what other people call it. It is what it is now. I can high-five the camera, I would high-five the camera. What else do you do? You just call them and go. It's a lovely tasting. Hey, what do you do? I'm happy. What'd you, what call? Did you call? One, I called Beaujolais. Morgan Fuck, no, you I call called Shinon. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> I never called Shinon. <laughs> that was Shinon, man. That was Touraine, Shinon, 09, Cabernet Franc. It was beautiful. The next red um, was uh, Tannic. What'd you call? Uh, Nebbiolo. Nebbi I called Nebbiolo. I called Barolo. What year? 01. I called 01, too. I called five. Barolo Reserva from 2000, and I call six left bank, third growth, Bordeaux 2000, uh, 1855 classification, Cabernet Sauvignon. I called Rio Hot. Did you? I didn't get American Oak. I called older Brunello on it, so. Wine number one, I'm like, is this Pinot Grigio? Is this Shannon? I called Shannon on wine one. Oh, uh, I called uh, Grand Cru Alsatian Riesling on it. It's Shannon, dude. It's Sauvignon here. The wine spoke. It was woolly. It was funky. It was wonderful. It was nasty. It was great all at the same time. Aussie Riesling for two. No, um, I had to, it's definitely not Aussie Riesling, especially if I called Alsatian Riesling for the first one. Can of green beans, man, it was Gruner. It was flowery, there's petalance in it, and I end up calling um, call Abreno. Yeah. Interesting, it was super limey to me. I wanna go play flag football with those guys right now, I'll tell you that, though. We're totally more lost confused now. than uh, before, yeah. but that's We gotta go talk to the other boys, yeah. see what everybody else called. Yeah. The reality is you have no clue what the wines are, even when you think you do, and, uh, so you torture yourself, and that's very important to do. The important thing to do is to torture yourself over the next 36 hours and say, well, but, but it could have been Gruner. No, wait a minute, I think it was Albarino. It wasn't Rhone, it wasn't Albarino if it was pale like that, so where do you go? Do you go Sancerre? You, I call, you call pyrazines? I was looking for pyrazines on the I looked for pyrazines. I got grapefruit. I didn't look for it. They hit me in the they face. Hit, okay, they hit you. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. I just like couldn't Sauvignon get Blanc is so gettable. Might be some on the that, the yeah. fact that no one in this room calls That's Sauvignon right. Blanc scares me. I got crap. chocolate. I know, I that it. was a cruel flight. Yeah, it was. I, I thought, thought it was a fun flight. That was a hard flight. Diabolical. It's like, it's really hard. It sounds so ridiculous because, you know, it's fermented grape juice. I mean, you know what I mean? Are we in agreement that six is an old world one? Yeah. Yes. You and I called Italian it. Italian, and I called uh, Brunello, yeah. Barolo Brunello, and I, then I was like, you just gotta roll with it. Yeah, yeah. five and six, I called, you called Italian both? Yeah. I called four and five both Italian, actually. That's what you did? Yeah. yeah. It's four, the good news is if everybody's all over the place, probably someone passed. <laughs> it's, just, it's just combinations. Pass or fail, they will never tell you what the wines were. You know, you just you gotta stay in it if you really want it. You know, it's a test of dedication. This whole process, you know, it's it's full of confidence and doubt within the same ten minutes, and like you know, it's like it just doesn't stop. Kinds to Cavadinius Wars, Kinds to Argelis Taylors, Kinds to the Terra Theta, Kinds to the Terra Theta, Taylors, Kinds to Argelis Taylors.
Had a marathon day last night at Dustin and Zabato's house or room. Did like 13 or 14 hours of just straight review. And I came home about 12.30 or 1 and uh, I couldn't sleep until 5. I just kept on going through regions in my head. It was crazy. Today it's possible I've become a master sommelier. We all have a fear of failure. We all have a fear of being judged. You're working so hard, people tell you, you you didn't make it. Well, there's so much honor in trying. Being in the room when someone hasn't passed is the reason I don't do this anymore. I do the masters every three years because I have to. I've done it for over 25 years. I probably failed more people than the other human being on the planet, but it is one of the hardest things in my life I've ever had to do. Every year, over and over again. And after a while, it just gets to you. Uh, because you know how hard they work. You know, they come through your house and they taste and you get to know them as people and all that, but you know, exam day is exam day. It's like game day. You know, I mean, there's only gonna be one outcome. And what could have happened did. <sighs> Why do we keep finding ourselves in this position? You and me. Hmm? Didn't we just see you a couple weeks ago? Yeah. Didn't we have a very hard conversation? Yeah. Dad? How do you feel about it? Don't know. You don't know? You're not confident? I'm confident, no. but I don't know. Okay. Fair enough. Well, this is one of those interesting moments in a career. So I'm pleased to tell you, sir, that you'll be wearing the red badge. From then on, my master, it is an honor, an honor to work with you. <laughs> well done. Thanks, man. Well done. Appreciate it. Just smile on that face and go out there, huh? Show those pearly whites. At least you made you brush your teeth, as well as shave and clean up. Let you like Have a seat. Thank you. It's kind, of, it's kind of like the gunfighter code. I kind of like that. You know? Thank you. So how are you this week? I'm okay. Come on. No, I'm okay. I mean, huh? at, the, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm okay. Okay? We all work our butts off. Hey, seriously. <laughs> um, so let me give you results. Um, it, it, you had one part coming in, and uh, I'm sorry to tell you that uh, we didn't pick anything up. However, I, that, is, that being said, we're going to have a very serious conversation because you were immensely close um, and dramatic improvement. So we'll have that conversation. I don't want you to uh, think that you haven't improved. You okay. improved dramatically. Okay. That's what's important. Um, I was impressed, and I think you have the greatest potential and a great future. So keep that head up. We still have work to do. We'll do it again. We'll do it again. <clears throat> um, did okay this time. Did all right here. We uh, we got through that theory part, which is great. You know, okay. that's awesome. You did an awesome job on that theory and. Um, you know, tasting, you're going to have to, you're going to have to be working with tasting. You're going to have to be working with those, uh, with those candidates that you're going to be training from now on, Master. Okay? Woo! Congratulations, brother. <laughs> you made it all that hard work, and you finally... You finally brought it to the promised land, all right? <laughs> oh, thanks, Jay. You're welcome, brother.
I'll talk to you a little bit more about uh, a little bit more about it later. All right. How are you? I'm all right. Man. How you feeling? I feel good. Glad it's over. All right. How'd you think you did there? Theory felt good. Tasting, I think I was on the border. You passed theory. We got that out of the way. You're tasting. You still need to take again, unfortunately. We, uh, you know, we came close. We got one more piece. If you don't keep up the good work, and just keep, uh, you're just gonna have, you just got tasting to bang on now. You're gonna have to study those books, so that's a good yeah, thing, it's right? Refreshing, yeah. All right, excellent. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. Into that room. Oh, yeah. yes, you um, I had an out of body experience. Like, I was watching myself in the chair with Dame, and he was messing with me as usual. Right. I'm trying to remember what he said. Some clink. So now what? What are we going to do? We're burn the note cards, dude. We're having a bonfire. Brian McClinic? <laughs> <laughs> used to be, he was kind of a Colorado boy. You know, he was there in my town in Aspen for a little while. But uh, he's back in California where he belongs. Congratulations. Thanks. Here's your tie and your pin, sir. Uh -huh. Sorry. Thank you. All right. Picture with Dimitri and I. Hold this plum up, bro. Helps. New matches for you. We have Mr. Dustin Wilson. Formerly at the Little Now Hotel in Aspen, Colorado. Now, RN74 in San Francisco. He's hanging out with big guys like Raj Parr and whatnot, right? <laughs> so he's there today, and here he is today with his master diploma. Congratulations, Dustin. I know I was nervous um, before he like before he left for the exam, but it's when I got the phone call my, from my, my sister and telling me that Brian and Dustin passed, but Ian didn't. I was at work, I still remember, it's on a Friday. So that whole afternoon, I basically just sitting in the break room, cried the whole entire afternoon. When Dustin and I passed, uh, it was a big deal for both of us. You know, we got to go home to our wives. We celebrated, we partied. Um, Ian, I have to imagine for him, it was exactly the opposite. You know, he probably dreaded coming home, having to face his friends, his girlfriend. He really, really wanted to get through. Whatever issues you have in your life, whatever you hold, inside you that's not good, it will be drawn out by this exam. It just happens by attrition. If you don't face those things, you're gonna have a very, very difficult time passing this exam. If Ian faces those demons, he will be successful. Really, if anything, uh, what I've learned is that you finish that up, 
and then it's, it's even harder. The pressure is even more so because you have to stay on top. You gotta, every, you're a master sommelier at this point. You have to be a master sommelier at all times. You have to, you know, you have to stay on top of your knowledge. You have to stay on top of tasting. You have to stay on top of continuing to learn because there's all of a sudden lots of people that are looking up to you and looking at you in a different light. Do you know how many brilliant people there are who have taken the exam and are still not MSs? Five, six, seven times. Brilliant, but they're not MSs. No. I, I don't give up. I can't. Hey, baby. Hi. I have to burn all my flashcards because I passed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, I did it. Oh, my God. So, OK. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. OK. Bye. <laughs> oh, wow. He did this. <laughs> Thank God. Wow. Wow, this is crazy. I'm shaking right now. I'm literally shaking right now. This is so unreal. I can't I can't tell you how happy I am right now. I just really literally shaking right now.